We're here at the Fort Mason Center in San Francisco. The reason why we're here is Robo Games. This is the fourth annual robotic games competition and there's over 70 events with many, many different classes of robots and competitors from all over the world. It's, it's been featured on ESPN's top picks of the, the best sporting events of the year. When robots come to kill us, we can blame these people. The event runs for three days and features some of the most amazing technology you're likely to see. This is the cutting edge of robotics and the cutting edge of nerds. We're getting about 3,000 people a day coming through here. And that does not count the contestants or the teams. We've got 850 individual contestants that have registered just for this event. We have a couple of teams here that are complete families that fight together, from the littlest kids up to dad. There's one team here, It's the kid's like eight years old, and he's here with his grandfather competing. Aww. It was so sweet. <laughs> we have university teams. Those are very popular. Uh, some of the most intense competitors we've seen are here for the soccer events. In fact, some of the most challenging events at Robo Games involve soccer. While the big fighting robots are basically remote controlled cars with weapons, soccer robots are usually autonomous, meaning they rely on artificial intelligence and a whole lot of sensors to find the ball and kick it in the right direction. Because these robots are so finely tuned to their environment, seemingly tiny changes can completely incapacitate them. This year, the shade of green of the pitch is slightly closer to the green of the ball than it was last year, and tragically, many robots can't tell the difference and just stand there looking around pathetically until their creators take them away. Challenges like these are exactly why RoboGames has been so effective at advancing the state of the art of robotics. Now, that may be why the robot builders come here, but that's not why the general public comes here. They want to see BattleBots sawing each other in half, and in the main arena, that's exactly what they get. is CM Robotics. There's uh, four of us here today. Uh, we have two robots. This is Ziggy. The other one's called uh, Texas Heat. This one has won both matches. This one hasn't competed yet. And so what, what are the various weapons and tricks that you've used on your robots to, to uh, do so well? Sure. Um, so actually what's, what's funny is the, the most important one is the simplest one. It's just a wedge. And uh, for the most part, uh, whoever's able to get under the other guy uh, most often can control the match. driving and then beyond that then you, you get into the weapons right so we have a, a flipper weapon here we got a flamethrower and the other one and then uh, what, what drove you to be here all today? right sure uh, um, so originally I saw it on TV I thought hey I, I can do that so that was about five or six years ago and we've been doing it ever since What are you in charge of here today? I'm running the 150 gram robots, the one pound robots, and the three pound robots. Cool, and so what, what are the restrictions, what are the rules uh, for, for robots to be able to enter apart from the weight? Um, really, uh, basically it's all, you just gotta be within a weight limit and there's no size restrictions and it's uh, basically anything goes. Cool, and are the, ro are the robots remote controlled or are they artificially intelligent or there, what's the go? There's actually two classes, there's the RC class and then there's autonomous which is uh, basically you turn your robot on and it does its own thing that's pre-programmed to basically find the other robot and fight. Cool, so what's the, what's the kind of weapons that you see on these things for them to destroy the other robots? Um, some of the crowd favorites would be the flamethrowers, they, they go crazy over it. I mean it doesn't do much damage but the, the crowd loves them. And then the spinners, of course, um, basically you get hit by the right spinner and it'll just destroy a robot in a single hit. Oh. 
and it can knock them. I've seen up to the arena ceiling a number of times. Wow, so they're like actually throwing the, throwing the robot up to the roof and down yeah, again. Yeah, I've seen them bounce up, down, and back up again. Like, are, are there any robots that are in there basically not to win it, but just to be like the Harlem Globetrotters of robots? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, there's, we get all sorts of them out there. Like one of the, the great ones, a guy built a flamethrower bot out of balsa wood, which is just, you know, ironic because you got a flamethrower made out of wood. And he would constantly catch on fire himself, And but everyone loved him. And then also we have a a crowd favorite called the cardboard box and it's basically just a simple cardboard box with uh, a couple servos for drive and the crowd always roots for the underdog and so they go for that one. <laughs> But not all the robots come here to fight. There are a few celebrity robots here to make contacts and just maybe break into Hollywood. I'm a project supervisor for M5 Industries, uh, the home of the Mythbusters. Cool, and so what does, uh, what does M5 Industries do? We, uh, we produce props, uh, animatronic puppets, RC puppets, cable puppets, for, uh, mainly for commercials. We've got a, a project here of uh, Fawn Davis, uh, Morav, uh, currently in, in, uh, in development. M5 projects over here with Weibo from uh, uh, Flubber done quite a while ago. And here's another project, um, just purely self-promotion and for fun. We're uh, going to attempt to set the world record, uh, Guinness Book of World Records, the longest distance jumped by a robot-controlled motorcycle. Uh, now, is, is this the only distance that's ever been jumped by a robot motorcycle? I cannot answer that question at this time. No, yeah, we, if we jump a foot, we're going to set the record. <laughs> and that's actually the whole point. It's, um, uh, for me, at, at M5, uh, I was interested in the storytelling and the puppets, and I really didn't care how many servos were in it. And now a lot of that is gone because of CG, uh, all the computer-generated imagery. So. Uh, this is more about the gag and the story and, and the attempt itself, uh, sort of humanizing it uh, in a guy sense, I guess. So, that was Robo Games, and now as San Francisco's famous fog rolls in, so too does the fog over our future as rulers of the planet, because as I've seen today, these guys are scary.